Doctor Who Timeless Tales Alone Written by Ross Wilson Read by Scott Cartwright It was a miserable planet. The air was thick and toxic. The gravity just a little bit too strong. Violent rain battered against the hard, rocky ground. The cracks in the stone almost mirroring the cracks of lightning that sporadically lit up the night sky. Life, be it plant or animal, was nowhere to be seen. If there was any, it had most likely evolved to spend as little time on the surface as possible. Which was fair enough. There was nothing to see up there. Nothing but rocks and rain. Rocks, rain, and on one particular day, a police box. The Doctor had not come to the miserable planet on purpose. In fact, if he'd known quite how miserable it was, he probably would have made a special effort to avoid it. But something had drawn him there. The planet was making a noise. It had all started, as it so often did, with the Doctor tinkering with the TARDIS console. He had been travelling alone for quite a while, and felt like a little bit of music would do him some good so he decided to see if the TARDIS could pick up any interplanetary radio channels. He had managed to tune into a few stations, none of which took his fancy, before eventually stumbling across a strange, garbled message coming from the nearby world. There definitely seemed to be some sort of voice hidden in the transmission, but it was completely intelligible, as if someone was trying to intercept or block it. Hmm, that's odd. What are you trying to say? And who's trying to stop you from saying it? After a good few minutes of fiddling, it became clear that the message actually wasn't being distorted by some third party. In fact, he was hearing the message loud and clear. The problem was that the message being transmitted was incomplete. The problem was at the source. No wonder I can't decipher you. There's nothing to decipher. Whatever's transmitting you has been damaged. Either there's been an accident, or there's been sabotage. Perhaps someone doesn't want your message to get out there. I wonder why. And so the Doctor found himself on the miserable planet. Fortunately, the TARDIS had made it very clear to him that the air was toxic, something he would have realised himself had he bothered to check the atmosphere readings, like he was supposed to. A quick rummage around the TARDIS wardrobe had produced a bulky orange spacesuit that, while not as stylish as his usual attire, would at least keep him alive, and survival was one of the few things he was willing to forgo style for. As he stepped out of the TARDIS, he stumbled. Not ready for the unusually strong gravity, he leaned against the TARDIS to stabilise himself, and looked around. Well, it's hardly Jalapetus free, and no signs of civilization, which begs the question, where was that signal coming from? After a few moments, he spotted something. He'd initially dismissed it as just another rock, but at a second glance, it looked far more like a transmitter. That's the ticket. The doctor struggled his way over to the transmitter. His already incredibly heavy suit being weighed down even more by the planet's gravity. As he approached his target, he began to hear the sound of it whirring away, desperately trying to get its message out to the universe. It was strangely encouraging. That resolute little machine simply would not give up, and neither, the Doctor decided, would he. He pushed on and eventually made it, slumping down beside the whirring mech box. He would have taken a moment to rest, but at this point he could hardly even raise his arms, and if he waited any longer, he might never stand up again. He could feel the blood rushing down his body, being dragged down to his feet by that awful, awful gravity. He'd have to be quick. He looked up at the transmitter and noticed a misshapen metal object attached to it, presumably what remained of the antenna. The doctor sighed as he realised that the damage was likely just the result of the harsh weather, rather than deliberate intervention. He wasn't sure if he should be disappointed or relieved, but that wasn't important now. Either way, it would take a fair bit of work to get the transmitter fully functional again.
and he could hardly bear to spend another second in that wet, heavy wasteland. He wrapped his arms around the transmitter and gave it a tug, but much to his annoyance, it was fixed into the ground. He couldn't bring it back to the TARDIS. He'd have to do the repairs here. Things can't just be easy for once, can they? Unless... He began to pat the sides of the transmitter's base, searching for something. Eventually, he came across a small protruding bar, like a handle. He gave it a firm tug and part of the metal slid off, revealing the transmitters in a workings. Aha! Sitting just inside the new opening was a delicate rectangular object covered in blinking lights. A data stick! Whatever message you're trying to transmit, it'll be on there. He reached into the small opening, and with as much delicacy as his unweirdly black gloves would allow, he gave the data stick a tug. It came free, and as it did, the blinking lights and the steadfast whirring ceased. The doctor solemnly patted the now silent box. Well done, old thing, well done. You can rest now. He replaced the panel and took the data stick into a small pouch in his leg. Then, he very slowly got himself back onto his feet. He could swear that gravity was getting stronger by the second. If only I still had that anti-grav motorbike. As he gradually made his way back to the TARDIS, he thought of the transmitter and its constant defiant whirring. That poor thing could have been doing that for years, decades even, but he didn't care. It fought on. No matter what was thrown at it, it continued to do what it knew was right. There was a lot to be learned from that transmitter. After a few minutes of simply lying down and enjoying the feeling of regular gravity, the doctor set to work constructing a new transmitter. He included a force field to protect it from the elements and anti-gravity clamps to keep it on the ground, with small solar and wind-powered batteries to keep it chugging along all year round. The doctor had to admit, it was a nifty piece of kit. All that was left was to install the data stick, but first he wanted to run it through the TARDIS to finally hear the message he had thought so desperately to preserve. Now, we've both been through a lot to get to this point. Whatever it is you've got to say, it better be good. He inserted the data stick into the TARDIS console and it began to play the message. Earth Exploration Craft C Delta 12, transmitting to all incoming Earth crafts. This planet has been studied and evaluated, and has been designated not of interest. There is no life or vegetation, weather is unpredictable, and gravity is uncomfortably strong. There is nothing of value on this planet. All Earth craft are advised not to approach. There's nothing here for you folks. So that was the message. It was a message that literally said, Do not come to this planet. He sighed. With an uncharacteristic silence, he inserted the data stick into the transmitter and headed for the door. With the shiny new transmitter securely in the ground, the Doctor gave the miserable landscape one last look. It had a strange beauty to it. It was completely untouched by humanity. Finally, humans had learned to leave nature alone, even if it was only because they couldn't find a way to exploit it. It was something, at least. And then there had been the transmitter, the staunch defender of the most miserable place in the universe. Its sole purpose in life was to tell people, don't come here, it's very boring. It was a tough job, but someone had to do it, and it had done it so well. All alone, for all those years, never ceasing, at least until something went wrong. But all it needed was a friend to put things back on track. There were kindred spirits, no way. The doctor smiled and stepped back into the TARDIS. Moments later, it was gone, and the miserable planet was empty once again. <laughs>